Lord, we say thank you. Lord, we say thank you. Lord, we say thank you. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the adoration. Lord, we say be thou magnified. Be thou magnified, Lord Jesus. Be thou magnified, Lord Jesus. Be thou magnified, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' victorious name we pray. Who is like unto thee? Oh, Lord, who is like unto thee? Oh, Lord, among the gods, who is like thee? You are glorious in holiness and fearful in praise. Do ye wonders, hallelujah, hallelujah, who is like I come to thee, oh Lord. Who is like unto thee? O Lord, among the gods, Who is like thee? You are glorious in holiness and fearful in praise always do he wonders hallelujah hallelujah we are here again we are here again father we are here again holy ghost come and take control Amen. We are here again, here again. We are here again. Father, we are here again. Holy Ghost, come and take control. Amen. Father, we are here once again tonight. We thank you for a wonderful day like this in your presence. We give you all the glory and honor and adoration. We say, be thou exalted, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Tonight we ask that you move in our midst in the mighty name of Jesus. Speak to us this evening, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Visit us by your word tonight in the name of Jesus. Give each and every one of us a definite encounter by your word in the name of Jesus. Thank you because it is already done. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' victorious name we pray. Let us have our seat in the presence of the Most High King. By the special grace of God, this month here in GGIC has been tagged as the month of divine enlargement. And we thank God for the enlightenment of his word through different anointed ministers of God. And tonight in our Bible study, we'll be examining the topic which says the principles of divine enlargement. Principles of divine enlargement. When we look all through the Bible, there are many people in the Bible that have walked in the realms of divine enlargement. And therefore, in our quest as an individual, as a family, as a church for divine enlargement, I believe that um, we don't need to reinvent the wheel, but rather we should, elim we should emulate those people by following their footsteps. Although when we look through the Bible, some of them made terrible mistakes in the course of the journey of their life, which we must avoid at all costs. Tonight, in our Bible study, we are going to be examining a man in the Bible as a case study in our pursuit for divine enlargement. The man called Isaac. The man called Isaac. And our focus scripture for this study tonight will be taken from Genesis 26. Genesis 26. Due to brevity of time, I will read some verses and I will explain some. Genesis 26. Let's read from verse 1 to 6. Genesis 26, verses 1 to 6. The Bible says, There was a famine in the land, 
beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of Philistines in Gera. Then the Lord appeared to him and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land of which I shall tell you. Dwell in the land, in this land. And I will be with you and bless you. For to you and your descendants, I give all these lands. And I will perform the oath which I saw to Abraham, your father. Verse 4. And I will make your descendants multiply as the stars of heaven. I will give to your descendants all these lands. And in your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Verse 5, because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandment, my statutes, and my laws. Verse 6, so Isaac dwelt in Gerar. From these few verses that we've just read, what can we deduce from it? Number one, the Lord appeared to Isaac. To stay in Gera, even though there was famine in the land. Instead of going to Egypt for Gina pastures. And when we look at this story, it is not logical for Isaac to stay in Gera. But the Bible said, but he obeyed. Also, we can see that his greatness, the Bible made us understand that his greatness was linked to the obedience of Abraham. The Bible said he followed. When we look at it, he followed the footsteps of his father, Abraham. Isaac neglected his survivor instinct. He chose to trust God. Our obedience to God, people of God, is what we pave way for us in any circumstance we find ourselves. Our obedience. Also, Isaac had God clearly. He had God clearly. Also from this verse, we can, what we've learned is that God is still in the business of speaking to people. But are we able to recognize his voice and acting unto him? How obedient are we to the voice of God? A.W. Tozer says, says, I believe the problem is that we have been trying to substitute praying for obeying. And it simply will not work. Instead of obeying, we prefer to pray. Isaac did not obey halfway. When we look at that verse, from verse 1 to 6. He believed totally. He did not allow, the, he did not allow pleasure to distract him from God's purpose for his life. Also, Isaac understood that comfort is the biggest threat to a man's destiny. Comfort is the biggest threat to a man's destiny. When a man chooses comfort, instead of obeying God, he limits himself in the journey of life. And the Bible says, as a result of Isaac's obedience, it was an embodiment of divine enlargement. As a result of Isaac's obedience, he was an embodiment of divine enlargement. Briefly, let us look at what happens. What happens when a man is an embodiment of divine enlargement? What happens? Number one, divine favor. Genesis 26, when we move to verse 11 of Genesis 26. The Bible says, so Abimelech charged all his people saying, he who touches this man or his wife shall surely be put to death. When we look at that verse, Isaac was supposed to be punished for lying that Rebekah, his wife, was his sister. But the tide turned around for him. It was shielded. When a man is an embodiment of divine enlargement, one of the things that drops on him is divine favor. No matter his error, they will always be overlooked. 
Another thing that happens when a man is an embodiment of divine enlargement is that he enjoys divine abundance. He enjoys divine abundance. When we go to verse 12 of Genesis 26, verse 12, please, yes, yeah, verse 12. Then Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in that in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. Verse 13. And the man waxed great and went forward and grew until he became very great. For he had possession of flocks and possession of herds and great stores of servants. And the Philistines envied him. God enlarged Isaac in that same land where there was famine and he ripped hundred food. How is that possible, people of God? It is possible because when God is involved in a man's equation, whatever that is happening around him must obey to the voice of God. When God is involved in a man's equation, whatever that is happening around him must obey to the voice of God. No matter the recession in Gira, Isaac continued to possess his possession. Another thing that happens when a man is an embodiment of divine enlargement is that he enjoys God's mighty act. He enjoys God's mighty act. In Genesis, when we go to verse 15 of this Genesis, verse 15, that now the Philistines have stopped all the wells which his father's servants had dug in the days of Abraham, his father. And they filled them with the heart. When we look at this verse, in a man's journey to divine enlargement, there will be opposition to test is our faith. There will be opposition to test our faith. For example, Red Sea was an opposition to the children of Israel. In Exodus chapter 14 verse 18. But God used that situation to gain honor for himself over Pharaoh, over his chariots, and his horsemen. So when opposition comes in our quest for divine enlargement, we should know that God wants to showcase his mighty heart through it. When we get to verse 16, the Bible says, And Abimelech said to Isaac, Go away from us. You are much mightier than we. Divine enlargement comes with an empty price. Divine enlargement attracts envy. It attracts trouble, hatred, jealousy, warfare, resistance. The scripture even made us to understand in 1 John chapter 5, verse 19, towards the last verse, it says, The whole world lies in wickedness. 1 John 5, 19. It says, The whole world, the whole world lies where? In wickedness. But Romans 8, 37 made us to understand that yet in all these things, we are more than conqueror through him who loved us. People of God, I want us to know tonight that in our quest for divine enlargement, we cannot afford to be ignorant of Satan's devices. That is why in Psalms 144, Psalms 144 verse 1, David said, Blessed be the Lord my rock, who trains my hands for war. And my fingers for battle. When we get to verse 17 of that Genesis 27, 26, the Bible says, Then Isaac departed from there and pitched his tent in the valley of Jira and dwelled there. Then Isaac departed from there and pitched his tent in the valley of Jira. What does valley mean? Valley means a low area of land between hills or mountains. That is what the valley is. 
a low point or a condition in a man's life. Isaac pitched his tent in a low condition, but he did not let his environment to truncate God's promise for him. Isaac was in a valley. He was in a low condition, but he did not allow his environment to truncate God's promise for him. Isaac chose to focus on God's promises, not his present condition. Every power that wants to relegate you to the valley of life loses their hold over you tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. When we get to verse 18 of Genesis 26, the Bible says, And Isaac dug again the wells of water, which they had dug in the days of Abraham his father, for the Philistines had stopped them up after the death of Abraham. He called them by the names which his father has called them. Isaac knew about the battles that Abraham fought on his way to his own divine enlargement. He knew. And when he encountered the same problem, he was not shaking. Why? Because he knew that it was a win-win situation for him. Because the God that backed his father up is still on the throne. Whatever battle that your parents fought that is trying to confront you is crushed tonight once again in the mighty name of Jesus. When we get to verse 19, verse 19, the Bible says, And Isaac, servant, digged in the valley and found there a water of springing water, a well of springing water. Verse 20, And the headmen of Jira did strive with Isaac's headmen, saying, The water is hers. And he called the name of the well Isaac, because they strove, they quarrel with him. Isaac, means contention it means jealousy because anybody that is jealous of someone can kill the person it's written in the bible songs of solomon chapter 8 verse 6 it says jealousy as cruel as the grave why did cain kill abel jealousy why did the brothers of joseph why did they sell him out? Jealousy. Whatever that you have suffered because of jealousy, may God of heaven fight for you and reward you accordingly in the name of Jesus. And they dig another well, verse 21, and strove for that also. And they called that name Sitnat. Sitnat means competition. Jealousy gives birth to competition. Why is it that the earth men, they did not come when they were about to start digging the well? They waited until they finished digging the well until the point where they get to where there is water. And that is where they showed up to claim it. Every power that is waiting for you at the junction of your divine enlargement are rendered powerless tonight in the name of Jesus. When we get to verse 22 and he moved from there and dug another well. And they did not quarrel over it. So he called its name Rehoboth. Because he said, for now, the Lord has made room for us. And we shall be fruitful in the land. Hallelujah. Why did they stop quarreling over the well? Because they discovered that the more that they afflict Isaac, the more God enlarges him. Rehoboth means a large room, fruitfulness, expansion. I see God taking you to a large room in the name of Jesus. You shall no longer be small. You shall be mighty. You shall be enlarged. You shall be great in the name of Jesus. Another thing that happens when a man is an embodiment of divine enlargement is that he enjoys divine backing. Divine backing. No, mat no matter the obstacles that a man faces, he will always come out victorious. Genesis 26, when we get to verse 24, the Bible says, And the Lord appeared unto him the same night and said, I am the God of Abraham, thy father, 
fear not, for I am with thee, and will bless thee and multiply thy seed for my servant Abraham's sake. Divine backing. Another thing that a man enjoyed, another thing that happens when a man is an embodiment of divine enlargement is that such man cannot be hidden. He cannot be hidden. Such man, such person cannot be overshadowed. Such person cannot be relegated in the journey of life. Divine enlargement is what distinguishes men from mere men. Divine enlargement. Verse 28 of still Genesis 26. He says, but they said, we have certainly seen that the Lord is with you. So we said, let now be an oath between us. Between you and us. Let us make a covenant with you. Hallelujah. If we want to be an embodiment of divine enlargement, there are some criteria that we must strictly adhere to. Briefly, let us look at a few. Number one, we must grow up. Tell your neighbor we must grow up. John 6, 3 says, And Jesus went up into the mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. When we look at this verse, before the multitudes, before they could make any demand on Jesus, the Bible made us understand that he had to climb to a higher level. He ascended higher before attending to the demands of the multitude. People of God, God may not allow some things to come to us because there are some heights that we are yet to attain. And there are some improvements that, that we need to make. If we meet the demands of the multitudes that will come to us, then we, must, then we need to do what? We need to grow up. We need to rise higher than where we are right now. We cannot afford to be in the same level as the multitude that needs us. Because divine enlargement attracts multitude. Divine enlargement attracts multitudes. It is only when we grow that we can give and be a blessing to people. We must endeavor people of God to grow spiritually in our prayer life, in our core values, even in righteousness, in our commitment and dedication to God. Hebrews 6, 1 says, Therefore, living the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection. Hebrews 6, 1. Therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again. For us to be an embodiment of divine enlargement, we must choose to grow up. Another criteria for us to be an embodiment of divine enlargement is that we must be a disciple. We must be a disciple of Christ. In John 6, where we read, the Bible made us understand that the multitudes there, that they came to Jesus, they enjoyed the bread, they enjoyed the fish, but the disciples that were with Jesus, they knew the source of the bread and the fish. The multitude got the miracle, but the disciples, they knew the source of the miracle. Are you a disciple or you are a follower? Because as a disciple, disciples, they crave for spiritual growth over any physical resources. Why a follower just hangs around because of what he or she hopes to get from Christ. God is calling us to the place of discipleship. The place of discipleship is where we submit totally to the will of God for our lives. For us to be an embodiment of divine enlargement, we must be focused on the giver and not get carried away by the gift that we want to receive.
another criteria to be an embodiment of divine enlargement is that we must possess the spirit of discernment. We must possess the spirit of what? Of discernment. The ability to judge well. That has wrecked many, even in the Christendom. The ability to judge well. We must know when to move on. We must know when to stay. We must know when to disconnect from some certain people. In Luke 19, Luke 19, Luke 19, 40 to 44, I will paraphrase this. Jesus wept over Jerusalem and rebuked the Jews for not knowing, for not knowing the day of their visitation. Because the Bible says, because the Jews were undiscerning. They were undiscerning. They had eyes, but could not see. They had ears, but they, but they did not hear. Art, but they did not understand. They failed to recognize and embrace the Messiah when he visited. People of God, we must not allow our human, human reasoning to crowd our judgment and ultimately miss out of our season of divine enlargement. We must not allow our, our human reasoning to crowd our judgment. If Isaac did not discern God's, vo God's voice in Gira, people of God, he would have ended up in Egypt and he would have been happy that he escaped the famine, not knowing that he has missed out of God's divine plan for his life. We must discern spirit of discernment. For us to be an abundant of divine enlargement, we must possess the spirit of discernment. Because, you know, we can't afford to hold on to whatever God has not ordained for us. Another criteria to be an embodiment of divine enlargement is that we must purge ourselves. We must purge ourselves. That means we must cleanse ourselves. We must clean ourselves. We must be cleansed. When we look at Esther chapter 2, there's a man called Igai. The king entrusts all the prospective queens of the land into his hand. But before he could perform in that assignment, something in him had to die. He had to lose affection and sensibility towards women. Before he could function in that assignment. People of God, God may not entrust some things into our, into our hands. God may not entrust us with divine enlargement until some things in us die. Things that could truncate our divine enlargement. Some attitudes. Some behaviors. Some lifestyles. Some strange affections must die. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 21. 2 Timothy 2, 21. says, If a man therefore purge himself from this, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every what? Good work. For us to be an embodiment of divine enlargement, we must do away with things that are, you know, Things that are mutually incompatible with God's plan for our life. Things that are mutually incompatible to God's plan for our life. We must do away with insincerity, dishonesty, inconsistency, laziness, pride, lust, immorality, hate, bitterness, lies, and so on. The fact that divine enlargement comes at a cost. Divine enlargement, it comes at a cost. Some things must die before a man can dare to be an embodiment of divine enlargement. Another criteria to be an embodiment of divine enlargement is to learn 
to walk away from discouragement. We must learn to do what? To walk away from discouragement. In Genesis 37, where we look on from verse 6 to 11, Joseph's brother hated him and they made fun of him because he what? Because he told them his dream. But Joseph, he was not discouraged. He ignored them. He did not even, you know, his slavery to deter him from, from, you know, from fulfilling purpose. We must do what? We must learn to walk away from discouragement. When we look at the story of David as, as well, in 1 Samuel chapter 17, from verse 28 to 37, David was discouraged from fighting Goliath. You know, his, his brother Eliab confronted him. But David ignored the voice of discouragement from professional warriors. Even though what Saul told him, the king, you know, he ignored all those, the voice of discouragement. And he relied on God alone to win Goliath. And he won. What about Moses? When we go to Genesis chapter 10, Moses refused to listen to Pharaoh. Ex eh, sorry, Exodus. He refused to listen to Pharaoh when he asked them to remain in Egypt. He insisted that they must leave Egypt because he knew that divine enlargement was ahead of them if they follow God's instruction. For us to be an embodiment of divine enlargement, we must learn to walk away from every form of discouragement. Lastly, another criteria to be an, an embodiment of divine enlargement is that we should learn to speak success. We should learn to speak success. When David spoke with Saul concerning Goliath, the Bible made us understand that he spoke confidently about killing Goliath the same way he killed the lion and the bear in the bush. If we examine that verse very well, David was yet to confront Goliath but his word demonstrated the success that he expected. Instead of proclaiming what is happening, we must declare what we want to see. We must look beyond the weight of our challenge, people of God, and declare that we will surmount it. We must look beyond the impossibilities and declare our divine enlargement. Everyone in the battlefield was afraid of Goliath. David was the odd man out. He was the one who believed that success was possible. And he kept speaking it even when he had no supporters. This shows, you know, that we can create a different reality with our words. It shows that we can do what? We can create a different reality with our words. Our words can prepare the ground for our success. So for us to be an, to, for us to be for us to be an embodiment of divine enlargement, we must keep speaking the right words. And soon our words will become a reality. Briefly, what are the hindrances? To divine enlargement. Before we go and pray. Let us look at two. Number one. Sin. Is the number one hindrance. To a man's divine enlargement. Sin will hinder a man. From experiencing divine enlargement. Unless it is repented of. Confessed. And forsaken. Because Proverbs 28 verse 13, it says, He who covers his sin will not what, prosper. 
But whoever confesses and forsakes them will have what? Mercy. Sin. People of God, sin is an enemy of divine enlargement. Sin is an enemy of divine enlargement. When we, when we flash back to, you know, to the Bible, in the, in the battle of I, in the Bible, sin denied the Israelite enlargement until the sin was dealt with. It was sin that robbed Reuben of his inheritance and made him an unstable man. That made Reuben. Sin robbed him of his inheritance and made him an unstable man. Therefore, we must deal with every form of sin in our life if we are going to experience divine enlargement. Hallelujah. Secondly, another hindrance to divine enlargement is unfaithfulness. Unfaithfulness. The truth is this. A Christian, a believer, who has not passed the test of faithfulness does not qualify himself for divine enlargement. No matter how we shout, this is our year of divine enlargement. This is our month of divine enlargement. A man or a woman who has not passed the test of faithfulness does not qualify himself for divine enlargement. Enlargement means more responsibility. And anyone who has been found unfaithful in his or her present level cannot move to the next level. In the school of God, no one is promoted on trial. No one. In Luke 19, 17. Luke 19, 17. And he said to him, Well done, good servant, because you were faithful in a very little have authority. Over many cities, ten cities. Are you faithful at your present level? The reality is this a man cannot walk in the realms of divine enlargement unless heaven trusts him. Let us rise. A man, a woman cannot walk. In the realms of divine enlargement, unless what heaven trusts him or her. Tonight, I want us to pray. The Father, in your mercy, remove anything in my life that is against my divine enlargement. Father, in your mercy, remove anything in my life. That is against my divine enlargement. I want us to pray in the mighty name of Jesus. That Father in your mercy. Remove anything in my life. That is against my divine enlargement. Father in your mercy. Father in your mercy. Remove anything in my life. Father remove anything in my life. That is against my divine enlargement. Father remove anything in my life. That is against my divine enlargement. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father in your mercy. Remove anything in our life that is against our divine enlargement. Rabba sheta librado satalia. Redabo shete libraku satali kerebo sata. Mashude librado satali pakarabo city. Father, in your mercy, remove anything. Anything in my life, anything in our life that is against our divine enlargement. Anything in our life that is against our divine enlargement. In Jesus' name we pray. I want us to pray that, Lord, use my life to show forth your greatness. Father, use my life to show forth your greatness. I want us to pray in the mighty name of Jesus. That, Father, Lord, use my life to show forth your greatness. Use my life to show forth your greatness. In the mighty name of Jesus. That, Father... Use my life to show forth your greatness. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, use my life to show forth your greatness. Father, use my life to show forth your greatness. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, use my life to show forth your greatness. Father, use my life to show forth your greatness. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, use my life to show forth your greatness. Father, use my life to show forth your greatness. 
le kose kete li braku shade, le pare de bo soto, li akaraba shadaba. Father, use my life, use my life, use my life to show forth your greatness. Le pato se kete liya, le akasha yaba ke se kete, le kushe ke yaba, makara bo soko tu. Father, use my life to show forth your greatness. Makuse kadaba, ye ko soko tu, le puto li bayaka se kete liya, karu ko se kete, shabada se kete liya, le kukere bo soto. Father, use my life to show forth your greatness. In Jesus' name we pray. I want us to pray that, Father Lord, make room for me and make me fruitful in all realms in the name of Jesus. Let us pray in the name of Jesus that, Father, make room for me and make me fruitful in all realms. Father, make room for me. 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 And make me fruitful. And make me fruitful in all realms. In the name of Jesus. Father, make room for me. Father, make room for me. And make me fruitful in all realms. And make me fruitful in all realms. In Jesus' name we pray. I want us to pray that prayer for GGIC. That Father, make room for GGIC. In GGIC, make room for us. Make room for GGIC. And make GGIC fruitful. And make GGIC fruitful. Let us pray that prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. La Shalaba Sata. Father, we pray for GGIC. We stand in God for glory, glory international church. The Father, make room for GGIC. Make room for GGIC. Make room for GGIC. Ya Parado Setelia. Le Kushakaraba. Father, make room for GGIC. Le pa kushete le bos. Ma parada shata. Le do sekete. Father, make room for GGIC. Le pa kushete liya. La ba shata laba. Le to sekete le bos. Father, make room for GGIC. Father, make room for GGIC. And make her fruitful. Make her fruitful. In all realms. Make her fruitful. In all realms. Make her fruitful. In all realms. Le kite le gre de 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 de. Heavenly Father, make room for us, Lord, in GGIC, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, loving Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for today. We appreciate and we glorify your name. Daddy, be thou exalted, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Almighty Father, we pray according to your word that we all you will enlarge us. In the name of Jesus. And daddy will come back to testify to your glorious name. In the name of Jesus. And your name alone shall be glorified. Thank you loving father. In Jesus victorious name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let us have a seat in a moment. Our God is a good God. We want to appreciate God. Our God is helping us and is leading us. To him alone be the glory in the name of Jesus. On Friday is another day that we are coming to pray. So let us come on time to pray. Amen. And we are coming together at 7 till 8, 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. And on Sunday, we are coming in by the special grace of God at 7.30 a.m. As of that time, I'm going to have a prayer meeting from 7.30 till 8.10, a prayer meeting. Then 8.10 to 8.50, that will be a glory class. And from 8.50, because it is a Thanksgiving Sunday, we could have it till 11. Amen. So come with your testimony. Come with out of praises. Come and glorify the name of the Lord. Come and give him back. Return back all the glory to him, all the praises to him. Come and give him thanksgiving for what he has done. For what he has done. Come and appreciate his holy name. Come with praises, with new songs in your heart. And that him we accept them in the name of Jesus. So also invite people, call other people that the church is open, as you all know. The Lord is doing wonders in the name of Jesus. If you have any testimony, please let us know before that time. During that testimony, we are not going to be, you know, 
attending to any other ones except the one that are put down, put down their names. And uh, if you are far away that couldn't come, you can just go to our website and leave your testimony there. We'll read it to the children of the Most High and we're going to glorify the name of the Lord together with you. Praise the Lord. I'm double sure the Lord is doing those great things. He's performing wonders. So let us come and appreciate this great God. As we are doing that, God will continue to glorify himself in our lives in the name of Jesus. In what we've just learned this evening, don't forget that Isaac listened to the voice of the Lord when he had him speaking. He listened and he did what he asked him to do. So also let us also listen to the voice of the Lord. God is speaking every now and then. Let us listen to him and let us equally do according to what God has taught us. As he was reading that Bible passages, that was just lightening up in my spirit. No, God was just ministering to me. Do you know that God knows what we don't know? God was revealing to him that that land that his children is going to have it. So God had a lot of things to reveal to you. Only you need to listen to him and let God minister to you. And because of that, secret things shall be made known to you. And eventually, what God wants him to do, he did, and God enlarged him. If, uh, if one is walking obedient in disobedience, that person will not be able to have that enlargement. Except when one listens to God, that's the time God will enlarge that person. And remember, in the course of the, uh, of the lesson, we, uh, we told that Isaac lied against God. I uh, lied. Sorry, not against God. Lied. And God, the mess of God covered him. Now we are in the time of mercy. Don't come to say, oh, I can lie as Isaac has lied. No, don't do that. It means that you are, you are tempting God. Don't tempt God. Don't crucify Jesus again. Now Jesus, has, Jesus Christ has come to the world, died for us. So let us quit all lying, all disobedience. Because in that lesson too, he said, the only way you can have the, 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 the way that uh, what can disqualify us is sin. So if you keep on lying, it can disqualify you. So let that, that us just take note of that. So don't pick that as, oh, I can lie. After all, Isaac lied. No. In that course of the lesson, if you listen carefully, he said, what can disqualify you is also sin. So lying is also sin. The Lord help us in Jesus' name. Shall we rise? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Him again. Hallelujah. We are serving a living God, a righteous God, a, a just God. I believe you have already, already packaged your um, offering. And uh, if you want to do it through website, you are doing it now. Go to gloryglow.org and just give. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We give you praise. You are good. No one like you. You are faithful. You are awesome. You are mighty. Daddy, I say thanks, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Thank you because we are hearing this at our own time. Heavenly Father, this is helping us even to grow to maturity. Thank you, loving Father, because you don't want us to make such mistakes that other people have made. And you are teaching us, you are telling us how we can get closer to you, how we can wise up, how we can grow, and how we can be disciples. And how we can even move with you that we will surely get our enlargement. We give you praise, we give you honor. That is our thanks, Lord, in the name of Jesus. In those days, they don't have any pattern to, 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 to study. But in these days, we have so many people to study. And you are even leading us. You are enlightening us. You are teaching us which way to go. We appreciate you and we glorify your name. That is our thanks, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. 
Daddy, we worship you for your servant that you have used. Daddy, we thank you, King of glory, for your spirit that is moving. We appreciate you for your knowledge and understanding. We give you praise for all that you have done. Daddy, we appreciate you for we that are so listening. Daddy, we say thank you, Lord. Daddy, we worship you. That is our, our, our thanks, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Heavenly Father, we commit your servant into your care that you have used. Daddy, lay your hands upon him and continue to use him to your goodness, to your mercy. In the name of Jesus, love him, Father, I pray that you, Lord, continue to teach him. In the name of Jesus, that everything that you have, the virtue that has come out of him, you will replenish it even in his life. In the mighty name of Jesus, that all that has taught us, King of glory, it will be beneficiary of your blessing. In the mighty name of Jesus, loving Father, we pray that these that you have had today will not judge us when you come. In the mighty name of Jesus, but loving Father, it shall be the one that we are going to make use of and is going to continue to bless us till you come. We come to enlarge us. In the mighty name of Jesus, mighty Father, we commit all our seed into your care. That's you, Lord, you, Lord, that made Isaac to have plenty in the land. Daddy, you will, you know, we will, we will equally enlarge us as to as sowing seed into your house, King of glory. We, it will come forth in million folds in the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, you will bless us abundantly in the name of Jesus. You will bless us with what money can buy. You will bless us with what money cannot buy in the name of Jesus. Almighty Father, we appreciate you for enabling us to see the end of the month. King of glory, we pray that we Lord that have started the month, even with joy, we will also end the month with joy, in peace, in you, in the name of Jesus. And if you Lord comes before the end of the month, mighty Father, by your mercy, by your grace, we shall be rapturable in the name of Jesus. King of glory, we pray that till you come, we cover ourselves into the blood of Jesus, that no evil will happen to any of us in the name of Jesus, but continue to work stronger and stronger in you. In the mighty name of Jesus, the way you fortify Isaac, that no evil happen to him. The way you encourage him and you back him up. The way you are speaking to him, you will do more than that, even for us at this time. In the name of Jesus, and the grace to go higher and higher in you, that you grant unto each and every of us. In the name of Jesus, Heavenly Father, we continue to enjoy you. In the name of Jesus, when other people that is family all over in their lives concerning Isaac, he was enjoying your blessing. He was enjoying your enlargement. Daddy, I pray that we too we continue to enjoy you in all ramifications of life, in all good things. In the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we pray that your hand shall be mighty upon us. The way you are even speaking with him. Every now and then. And you are fighting his battle for him. Daddy, you continue to speak with us. And you continue to fight our battles for us. In the name of Jesus. Mighty Father, we pray that concerning us, we, say, we speak of the success story. Of how you have helped us. So shall it be. In the name of Jesus. As I can go with us, keep us and protect us. In the name of Jesus. As on Friday, we have the mind of coming back to come and pray unto you. Daddy, make it possible for us. In the name of Jesus. And on Sunday, we have the mind also to come and give you praise. So shall it be. In the mighty name of Jesus. Is there anybody that is, that is the one problem or the other? King of glory. I pray that you know, we intervene into all the challenges. In the name of Jesus. I make them victorious, Lord. Do so, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, loving Father. Daddy, we give you praise to give you Daddy, I will pray that for all of us, that King of glory, no temptation will overcome us in the name of Jesus. But we shall be triumphant in all areas in the name of Jesus. Thank you, King of glory. We give you praise to give you For in Jesus' victorious name, we pray. Amen. Shall we share the grace together? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Our anchor powerfully. That shall increase our greatness and comfort us on every side. Amen. Psalm 71, verse 21. The year 2022 is our year of divine enlargement. Amen. And the month of April is our month of divine enlargement. Amen. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon them 
and be gracious unto them. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. So shall it be. In the name of Jesus. Turn to somebody and say, God loves you and so do I. Take charge. Jesus is Lord. Amen.